Hi, and welcome to an episode of the JetRails podcast. I'm Robert Rand, your host. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about Magento extensions going SaaS, um, going from one-time installation uh, with one-time fee, single one-off products into a more modern uh, software as a service solution with ongoing support and maintenance uh, and really richer, deeper opportunities there to, to leverage more holistic systems as opposed to a lot of disparate uh, one-off extensions. I'm joined by uh, both Tristan and Virgil um, from the We Supply and Wet Will Pixel team. Um, a lot of history in the Magento ecosystem specifically. And uh, let me turn over the, the mic and let these gentlemen introduce themselves. Perfect. Thanks, Robert. Yeah, my name is Tristan Oker. I'm the director of business development for We Supply, uh, essentially responsible for um, generating partnerships with uh, agencies and other channel managers and uh, customer acquisition. Um, going in live today from Austin, Texas, one of the, I've like talked about great tech hubs in the US and excited to be here. I'll turn it over to, uh, to Virgil. Hey guys, thanks Robert for having us. Uh, my name is Virgil Geek. I'm the co-founder of WildPixel and we supply. So <clears throat> it all started a long time ago when I was actually first year in college. I was building my own website. I was selling um, my laptop bags, you know, online. You know, I was struggling, you know, building a website, very rookie, you know, like horrible websites, but it was working, you know, <laughs> which I strongly started, you know, to build up. And um, it went well for a few years you know during my college life you know i had some spare money <laughs> so it was a really good uh, learning curve um after college basically i started working for agencies i worked with um, marketing agencies working on the analytics side you know data, data analysis um but after a few years i actually joined a retailer and <clears throat> when working with this retailer it was quite a big retailer 60 plus stores um on the east coast selling fashion footwear apparel um but they didn't have the they had a really good physical presence but they didn't have any website at that point so i joined the team <clears throat> i was like the first guy on the on the digital team i had like a boss but that was kind of it and two people let's try to build this website so of course we started with magento we built a website we launched it it was all good you know like all the headaches you know with like making everything work together 20 extensions 30 extensions um and you know it it worked um <clears throat> but the big problem there was you know that every time we wanted to make a modifications you know like you had all these extensions had to work together so we bought from all the vendors, different extensions, front end, new update, everything was exploding. And I was like so tired of it. Like this is like probably like 99% of, you know, like Magento websites story, right? <clears throat> Tons of extensions, everything, you know, updates really hard to maintain. And at that point, I got so frustrated at one point because I was like, there must be a better way. And um, in my idea, it was that let's build like a framework, basically that contains, you know, a front end that's easy to modify, easy to update. Everything is very nice. You have options, you know, to make the changes, just like WordPress worked in that time, right? Um, very easy to customize everything. And you have all these extensions that you need to get the business up and running, right? So <clears throat> it's not extension for extension's sake. It's extension for starting out a business, you know, and basically scaling it to like a few millions of dollars, you know. And of course, each business has its own niche, you know, and its own needs. But the general, you know, is the same for everybody. Everybody needs a little bit of SEO, analytics, UI, um, easy ways to update front end, back end, everything. So that's how actually it all started. And we created our first <clears throat> team that's more like a framework, but team. Um, a Magento one, it was uh, named uh, Clio. It was really good. Mm -hmm. um, but then, you know, Magento 2 came. Uh, we were very at the beginning, you know, and we built basically Perl. And <clears throat> then we, you know, we built a top, on top of, you know, Perl, a bunch of extensions. Um, and the whole purpose there was, you know, to like make all the extensions work together, one update that basically takes care of like 80, 90% of your needs. And the current company is still running. 
uh, they are still using, they are still on Magento 1. Um, I left a few years ago and they didn't really move to Magento 2. Hmm. Um, but basically, they are still on Magento 1. Probably they're going to change very soon. Um, and I, I, I think I just finished writing maybe my, my I've lost track, my 12th article on <laughs> Magento 1 into life. Um, yeah. There's a lot of people that are going to be really coming down to the wire there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And do you remember w- when that site started around what version of Magento you started Ooh. with? Yeah, it was very early. Um, one point six, something like yeah. that. Five, something. That was, was like a pretty good time. That was more stable. <laughs> yeah, it was basically five, like seven years ago. So whatever it was, the latest version at that time. It was stable already. So it wasn't yeah. like, you know, like the bad Magento at one point. <laughs> yeah. It was already stable, you know, um, but it was still, you know, quite early. So, but yeah, they are still running on the same solution, you know, that we built that time, you know, which is our Clio team, Magento one. I'm not recommending anybody to use it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. And that's how, you know, it started. That's how WellPixel started. And um, that's actually the reason why we exist. So, you know, we're not out there, you know, to just build extensions for the extension sake. We're there, you know, to basically provide, you know, the the necessary extensions to get your website started, easy to maintain. You have SEO, you have UI, you have um, analytics. Yeah, that's WellPixel. <laughs> very, very cool. Um, yeah. So I, I want to go backwards a little bit. So you spent, sure. you know, your extra time in college uh, working on e-commerce and selling laptop bags. Uh, yeah. If you could go back and do that any differently, um, what do you think? Did that lead you into your career and, and help you find a passion? Or did that, um, you know, well, did you miss out on some of those college years doing that? Oh, no, absolutely not. I had more money to spend, you know, <laughs> more money for drinks. <laughs> so actually, That's what I very, thought you were going to say. <laughs> no, it was very good. It started with like Zendesk, you know, if you guys heard of it. So Zendesk, you know, it was like a long, long time ago, right? Yeah. And then I built it on uh, WordPress um, and kind of died on WordPress. So <laughs> yeah. no, it was great. And I can, you know, like my mom, you know, told me, hey, Virgil, you have to go and work somewhere, you know, like, I don't know, do delivery, pizza, you know, whatever. And I was like, no, I can do something better, right? <laughs> <laughs> I had this laptop, you know, which, you know, was quite big and heavy, you know, and I had to carry it around, you know, for college. And <clears throat> it was cold outside, you know, you had to like take it out, wait a few minutes so it warms up. And I was like, it's such a whack job, you know, like yeah. it's a better way to carry this big, heavy thing around, you know, and, you know, not wait half an hour for it to warm up so you don't, it doesn't crack on you, you know? So, yeah, I created this laptop bag that was like highly ice insulated, you know, so you could like take it out right away, put it on the desk, start it up and it was still warm, you know? It was really cool. Yeah. yeah. I called the business at that point. It was called Great Idea. <laughs> I still believe it was a great idea. <laughs> Sounds like yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. And from there, diving into spending your days trying to work out Magento extension conflicts. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because yeah. so I, my, when I finished college, I actually am an engineer, but not a software engineer. I'm an architectural engineer. Um, and I never actually worked in my field because um, when I graduated, it was like 2008. Yeah, eight, I think. Um, and nobody was building anything. So <laughs> my job was not in demand at all. Um, so for a year, I was waiting, you know, like, is nobody going to hire me anymore? You know, I'm going <laughs> to, like, I finished the college and no job. Yeah. So I turned to my second thing, you know, that I knew about, which was, you know, a little bit of marketing, a little bit of development. And within the first week, I found a job. And that's how, you know, I basically changed career path, you know, like many years ago. So from like being an engineer, you know, and like designing and like working on buildings on, you know, building websites. I'm still building something. You're building. <laughs> it's, <laughs> you know, it's just in a box somewhere that you can't physically exactly. touch it. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. How it did. Very cool. Yeah, that's, you know, I'll, I mean, I'll say I, I also uh, deviated from my, my college job, which was wildland firefighting, but I guess you could say I'm still in the, in the trenches with sales. <laughs> <laughs> 
they can fire. I don't know which one's more dangerous. <laughs> uh, depends on depends on how the weather is, you know. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, no. It, you know, just thinking about extension conflicts, I know that that it's been a bane of of a lot of people's existence. I've been hearing about more app conflicts recently. You know, people that try to make the shift from something like Magento to a Shopify. And it's a lot harder to try to break down conflicts because these are closed apps. Um, so you don't necessarily have the, the same ability to go in and, and engineer your way around the problem. Um, you know, a lot of folks that, you know, they, they see, oh, you know, I can get all the apps that I need, but they don't necessarily work together. Um, I, I think that there's going to be a, more of that happening as more people go into some of these other arenas and try to apply what they did or what they experienced in, in environments like Magento elsewhere. Um, you know, even if, if we solve for Magento. So uh, with, yeah. with that in mind, the original um, company started as WeldPixel. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. WeldPixel. And how did you come to that name? It's one of my favorite questions for uh, yeah, know, how tech companies come easy. about. So Weld uh, in German means world, right? And Pixel. And <clears throat> we're building websites, you know, and selling that across the world, you know. So we have a pixel, you know, across the world. <laughs> so well, pixel. There you go. Yeah, that was, that was good. Actually, I'm glad you asked that question because I actually didn't know before this podcast what well pixel meant. So that's uh, yeah. that's amazing. And that's why I love asking because it ha happens over and over again. <laughs> People don't know, and there's usually something cool behind it. Mm -hmm. um, and so. About how long has is, is WeldPixel been operating and, and how many extensions got created, uh, especially around, let's say, Magento 1? Sure. So it's been operating for like six or seven, six years, I think. Time six flies or... when you're having fun. Yeah, I don't even remember. Long time ago. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was a long, long time ago um, when we started. Um, yeah, with Magento 1, we had like a handful of extensions, you know, we basically built everything in a team, <clears throat> you know, like, you know, how a long time ago, it was like the bad reputation of a team, you know, like, it's just so heavy. It's everything there. You cannot, you know, take anything out. So with Magento One, we definitely took that route. And it was a good learning, you know, that, <clears throat> you know, many people don't actually need all those extensions, don't need all those features. So when we moved it to Magento Two, we built it completely differently. We basically built each extension, you know, and we made the extension part of like a framework, a theme, right? So you can easily go in, you know, and disable any feature that you don't need. So this way you can keep it very lightweight, you know, um, but if you need a feature, you have it there and you can enable it and it's going to work. So hmm. that's kind of like the approach we took. So, you know, you Much can- more modular. Yeah, very yeah. modular. You can add in, take out whatever you want, you know, yeah. and well, it's just like, <clears throat> enable disable for any feature. And Were we there, built, you know, extensions for Magento 1 that you built that you didn't want to port over to Magento 2? Like nobody really wound up buying them. There wasn't a lot of demand. Well, we don't know because we built everything as one product. Ah. <laughs> so I had no idea what people wanted. Or not. It was like one big bucket of like, take it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it works. It's really cool. But if you don't need the feature, it's there, you know, and you cannot get rid of it unless you're... Well, that, that's like your Magento admin in the first place, just because you're not going to use bundled products or, I don't know, you know, pick your, your feature set, right? It, it's there for you. Um, yep. I, I don't know very many people that know how to use every feature in Microsoft Excel, but there's some cool ones. Yeah, that's for sure. Um, so that, that's often the case of software. You've got to um, you know, try to build for everyone. Yeah. But the best, the second approach was way, way better. Because if you think about, let's say you want to have Mega Menu, right? And you don't want to use ours. You want to use a third-party one, which is completely fine. You can just go disable ours, right? So it basically like kind of like doesn't exist anymore. And you can install another one, right? So it's very easy to interchange where when you have like one big product, you know, if you want to install something, you have to install it on top of it. And then you have to, again, debug everything. So it's like, yeah, a way better approach with Magento to what we did. Yeah. <laughs> it's like so, so much better. And so tell me about some of the ramp up, how, you know, how you came to the We Supply brand 
and mm -hmm. you know you, you've really you know created um, you know a new brand around that. Um, how did that? What was the process of that like? Yeah, sure. So, we supply is not an idea that we had one day and then we developed it. It's actually an answer to a problem that I had. You know, just like we started WildPixel as a solution for a problem, uh, we supply is the exact same thing. So during my years, you know, working for as for the retailer, um, <clears throat> we did a major um, ERP integration. It was more than an ERP. It was an ERP order management system, warehouse management system, um, sales audit, POS, everything. So like a full, full implementation, right? It took years to be implemented. Um, and it affected every corner, you know, of the business. So everything, finance, everybody was in, uh, affected by it. Um, and, you know, first of all, it was a very long project. And um, it was really nice because everything kind of worked together. And all the orders ended up in this uh, order management system. And um, when we integrated it with Magento, um, you know, the orders basically kind of the flow was, you know, you place an order in the, on the website, it downloads into this order management system, and then it does its stuff, right? Um, but the order often gets super modified, right? You can add a product, you can exchange a product, you can do so many things, right? And so many things that are outside of Magento's capability, right? And when you try to sync that order back into Magento, I'm not saying that is not possible. There's a crazy amount of work that has to be done, you know, to actually do that. Um, and, you know, most likely you're going to have to modify so much, right? And we wanted to keep Magento as vanilla as possible, right? So, you know, we had multiple issues, right? We had, first, we need to push back the order updates back into Magento. Then we had, you know, the POS system, you know, kind of integrated with everything. It was kind of like an omni-channel where you can buy in store, ship it home. And that is actually a really bad experience, right? You can go somewhere, buy something, ship it home, and you get like, a, you know, like an order number, but there's nowhere you can go. You cannot go on the website and check your order because you didn't place it on the website, right? Mm -hmm. So you cannot really do anything. It's like this order that you placed at the store and it kind of dies there, right? Mm -hmm. So we wanted to accommodate those customers as well. And because, um, you know, like, I touched, you know, kind of every department of the company. Customer service was like a big problem as well. You know, like number one question they had was like, where's my order? You know, um, they did like multiple split shipments. So an order, you know, of three products might have came from two stores and a warehouse, you know, like three boxes, you know, like where's my order? Where's my other package? You know, um, the number two question was like, how do I make a return? How to, how, when do I get my money back? So we looked at like, how can we actually solve all these issues, you know, um, you know, very creatively. So <clears throat> we, really, we realized that, you know, like basically all the information is in this order management system, but syncing all that info back into Magento is like a nightmare, right? So we basically created, <laughs> we supply as like version 0 0.001, hmm. <laughs> which was kind of like a database with APIs, you know, and the front end, you know, where basically you can, go check your order, you can type in your order number and it can look up like a POS order, you know, that was meant to be shipped home. It's really cool, you know, like this kind of like omni-channel solution for order yeah. visualization yeah. and order tracking. So. Yeah. People throw around buzzwords and we talk about omni-channel and unified commerce and even at a more base level, multi-channel. But, you know, when you look at a lot of big, you know, big retailers and you see that, they don't handle buy online, pick up in store well, or buy online, return in store, or even showing you what inventory is available in what store. Um, for you know, for yeah. Thanksgiving, Costco's website was having a lot of issues. They've taken a lot of heat in in the press. You know, estimated maybe eleven million dollars lost in sales on uh, on that Thursday. I don't know what the real number is. That's you know, best guesstimates, but you know. They've got warehouses all over the country and they've got, you know, data that tells them what's in what warehouse, but they can't tell you on their website. <laughs> they can't yeah. even tell you which items they carry in store. Um, mm -hmm. You know, so you see a lot of what's going on and, and, you know, the bigger they are, sometimes the harder to 
to integrate all this data. But at the end of the day, consumers have expectations. Um, yeah, they that, just want simplicity. Sure. That, that's exactly how you're saying it is. It's because it's really hard. You know, you need to have like order tracking, you know, kind of real time. And, you know, like from the moment the customer pushes the buy button until, you know, actually gets routed to a location and, you know, goes through all these logics, like order routing is like so complex, right? Looking up inventory, you know, is so hard because you have like, you have to have like a real time, you know, update to have accurate, I mean, order lookup, not order lookup, inventory lookup. It's really hard because you might have a person, you know, buying something, he puts it in a cart, but from the moment, you know, at Costco, right, he puts it in a cart and checks out, it might take like half an hour. Mm-hmm. And during that time, you know, your inventory is not going to be accurate because you don't have like one more. So it's... it's yeah, you have to have reserves sure. and have all sorts of, uh, yeah. you know, tools in place in order to safeguard because otherwise you're back to that customer service nightmare. And exactly. you know, what a lot of folks don't realize is that that cost of customer service, there's a cost basically per minute <laughs> that you have someone on the phone and there's also, you know, cost to your brand and reputation and, and your customer lifetime value if your customers are frustrated, if it's not a good experience that they're having. So there's all sorts of, you know, uh, of analysis that you can engage in that says that this stuff makes a big impact. So it sounds like you created a portal to basically say, look, you know, Magento is not necessarily the best repository for everything. Um, coming from these other systems that there's not necessarily a good way to insert this um, into this relational database with all these different tables spreading out, you know, data that's meant to be there. Um, And, you know, you're not having people touch the, you know, outside users touch the ERP or or the order management system or something else that's really meant to be an an in-house, back-of-the-house software. So you created something fresh from the ground up. Yeah, pretty much. And we think, you know, like web orders, store orders, you know, we had the web app, you know, that was kind of like separate, but you know, it was like whatever. So that was there. <laughs> and like so many things, you know, all the orders, regardless of where they originate from, you know, they got into this place, right? Which we call we supply. And from there, you know, we integrated it into the website. <clears throat> and it's really cool because you actually have Regardless where you place the order, you can look it up, you know, and you can have the same experience that you have if you buy something online as if you would buy something in store or, you know, you place a phone order. So, yeah, yeah, it's really, really cool. I think that, you know, when we're talking about these kinds of brands, like every brand we talked about is got a lot of capital and they have a lot of ability to make these things happen. You know, hire somebody like Virgil and try and build something from the ground up. But for most companies, it's just not possible. Um, but customers still have the same expectations. I think that's where you know um, what we're we're trying to accomplish for clients is to give that functionality to you know your your average SMB mid market type of uh, online merchant. Yeah. Well, and the other benefit that a lot of those merchants have is that some of these huge stores they're dealing with ancient software their point of sale is is a relic already you know and you walk into an, a department store or i don't know you know uh an auto center or something and you see what they're using and you wonder how it's still running they used to make stuff really well <laughs> there's, there's some good terminals that they're running and um you know this i, I was just uh buying paint at sherwin williams and they turned around the computer to let me see some of what they were doing to customize some of the paint for me. And, you you know, you're dealing with something like from the 80s, which, you know, has a special place in my heart, but it's surprising that it's running such a large operation. And so what a lot of the the SMB and mid-market has going for them is that they're using software that's often easier to integrate. It has modern APIs that you can work with. It has a lot of building blocks that that you can leverage. And so that's, you know, the power of being in more standardized platforms, including software like Magento, where you're benefiting from what teams like yours are are already creating. Yeah. And it's one thing, you know, the functionality of getting everything integrated. Because that's like more on the development side, right? That's the back end, right? Customers do not actually see that. But if you think about it, um, you want to create that experience, you know, that is set by others, right? That's set by Apple, the experience that's set by Amazon, right? 
when you place an order on Amazon, right? Let's say you buy five products. It might come from five different, completely different stores, right? And But you never wonder like, hey, where is my order? You see exactly where is the order, when it's going to be delivered, where is the exact location. They don't send you like a tracking number and go and figure it out, go to USPS, you know, and figure it out, the UPS, you know. It's all on their website, right? You always come back to one centralized location, regardless of how many merchants are, you know, uh, involved in your transaction. So we basically try to, with WeSupply, we build that entire experience, you know, and trying to offer that experience to, to mid-market customers, you know, who, who aren't, who's not Amazon, but they have to compete, you know, with an offering that great experience. So. Uh, absolutely, that they can already have a much stronger user experience during the shopping process. They can already have much stronger customer service and content and all of these other things to endear themselves to the customer, build a relationship. But yeah, if, if, if the back of the house doesn't compete, um, you know, then the, absolutely it's, it's a missing puzzle piece. So it makes perfect sense to me. Yeah. And just as you said, like two seconds ago, you know, like there's a cost with each, you know, customer service call, you know, and often businesses are overlooking that, you know, but there's actually a cost. And um, right now, there it's holiday season, right? We just had Black Friday, we had Cyber Monday, right? Like the peak of the year, right? You have so many orders. And not today, but this week, next week, customers are going to start calling, you know, all of those businesses. Like, hey, I ordered product X and Y. When do I get it, right? In January, <clears throat> it's going to be the moment or after, you know, like the Christmas you know, like it's going to be the moment where basically those customers figure out the products they purchased is not in need anymore or it's not exactly what they need. And then they start to return them. So, yeah. you know, like customer service is like this often is this quiet department, you know, that's suffering because of the, um, you know, flows that the business implemented. You know, if they don't have a good order tracking, a good interface you know to track those orders to understand how many packages you have you know basically customer service is going to be you know bombarded with like where's my order how do i return well yeah and it's sometimes because it's the wrong department right you know so you have your when you're building a site or maintaining the site the e-commerce manager and the marketers and the merchandisers and you've got a lot of different people potentially giving uh, input and, and whatever management team in general but customer service isn't necessarily as involved and they often have to come back and if they're lucky fight for what they need um, yeah. but they don't in a lot of cases not all of course but they don't get the same seat at the table <laughs> when an e-commerce you know build or rebuild is being planned out um, they're coming back to the drawing board after the fact mm -hmm. yeah that's 100 percent like, think about it like if you like how many times have you called amazon <laughs> you know, and ask them for anything regarding your order. Like all the information is there at your fingertips. And that's essentially what we're trying to do here. Yeah. You know, un unless there was an order that I didn't receive, which has happened. And, you know, I'm, I'm not a huge Amazon shopper, but, you know, like most Americans that there are a few things <laughs> that, that come through and their customer service. I've never had any stellar experience with. There's nothing memorable about it to me in, in a positive, you know, no, a five-star customer service experience, but it's the exception to the rule. You're right that mm -hmm. that's not normally what's needed, and, and that that is uh, you know, part of what makes it successful. That the machine just moves along; that it is more automation in one way or another. Um, mm -hmm. And you know, so coming back a little bit to the two brands, Well Pixel and We Supply. Do both of these service the exact same target audience or is maybe one a little bit upmarket or one is more um, omni-channel or do you define these a little bit differently or, or do they really, really sit side by side in essence in terms of go-to-market? Sure. So uh, it's a little bit different. I would not say it much different. I think, you know, the experience that we can provide with we supply is <clears throat> and the experience that every store should have, you know, provide to their customers. Um, so there's no doubt on that. Uh, probably, you know, we supply is used by mid market, you know, an enterprise, but with the same effort, you know, even a super startup can use it, you know, so 
Even if you start out your website today and you have two orders a week, there's no reason why you cannot use it. Mm-hmm. You know, probably the most benefit is going to be seen by somebody who has a few thousand orders a month, you know, and they are going to really see, you know, the difference in the decrease in like customer service calls, you know, they're going to see, you know, like customer experience improvements, you know, and all that stuff. Yeah. And when you developed this product, you decided to go SaaS with it. It's software as a service, right? Yes. And so had you been watching others in the Magento community do similar things like um, maybe sh- web shop apps created Shipper HQ and, and went SaaS? Were there, um, you know, other forerunners that, that sort of led the way for you? Yeah, sure. So if you think about it, <clears throat> probably not everything needs to be SaaS. You know, but SaaS has its own benefits, you know, and I truly believe that the future is not going to be one of extensions that you just purchase It's going to be more on the SaaS side. And the reason why is that if you buy an extension, right, you pay indeed like a hundred dollars or something, right? Two hundred dollars for it. Uh, You have a few months, you know, for support, you know, you might have updates, right? But the way you have it with SaaS, you know, like you can actually rename SaaS as like success as a hmm. service, you know, because you're like basically you have to provide the customer success every day, every month for the length of the contract or, you know, like if you don't have a contract, whatever time. Yeah. So you constantly have to improve, you know, you constantly have to give them the best solutions, you know, to take care of their, you know, solution to have like a customer success manager, you know, to provide more value for the customer. And, you know, extensions are fine sometimes, you know, but there are solutions that just cannot work as extensions. So in our case, right, you're pulling information from multiple databases. You will have to build up your own database to maintain your own database, you know, to pull all this together. Uh, You have to have like API connections that you have to maintain to like UPS, USPS to get, you know, like the shipment update. Um, notifications you have to integrate with like um, you have to do some sort of SMS you know send out you know emails all that and yes you can probably make pieces of it as extensions and put all that uh, heavy weight on Magento you know to maintain everything but if you think about it that's the problem with it I think Magento is not built to be the solution. It's not an ERP. It's not an order management system. It's an e-commerce store, right? Mm -hmm. And yes, we can modify it until we get whatever out of it, but it's not meant to be that, right? And for we supply, you know, to operate and to provide, you know, the solution that is supposed to, I don't see it being like an extension. Well, and one of the reasons that, you know, people, from my perspective, need to be wary about staying on Magento 1 at this point is that a lot of those extension developers, there's not a lot of net new sites being built on Magento 1 for good reason. Um, mm-hmm. It's reaching its end of life that if you're going to build a Magento site, it's going to be on Magento 2. And so developers have been quietly in many cases abandoning their extensions they're not innovating they're not doing much to upkeep in some cases they're not upkeeping at all you're not seeing updates put out um, and that's not really uh, ideal especially l- let's assume that you're a merchant that you're working on your magento 2 site but uh, you know you're, you're going to launch it closer to june 2020 um, to the end of life of, of magento one you want those M1 extensions to be well supported in the meantime. Um, but when developers, you know, don't see any more money coming in, sometimes they're going to follow the <laughs> the money trail. They're going to really put their efforts into the next. When you go into a SaaS model, like you say, you've got to provide that, that same ongoing high quality product and service or, you know, your revenues on the line. Um, so yeah. you're partnering with them in some way or other. Um, some same way that, we do a jet rails, you know, we historically, you know, looked at a, a lot of web hosts that were charging, uh, based upon long-term contract. And so you'd lock in a one, two, three year contract that, um, would be difficult or tenuous to, to try to get out of if you were unhappy. And that led to a lot of merchants that weren't really thrilled with, with the experience. Often it was more of a set it and forget it, 
support, you know, in some cases declined. We take the opposite approach. It's month to month that we've got to re-earn your business every month. That mm-hmm. I like that part of the, the SaaS model. Um, and in essence, you're, you're getting something um, f- for the money. I, I used to uh, head up partnerships at a company called InChannel that does multi-channel integration. And something that I would notice time and again, that there were merchants out there that were building one-off connections between their e-commerce site, their ERP, something else to float product data, inventory, data pricing, um, order data, customer data, you know, wealth of, of data being connected between all these, you know, your point of sale, your ERP, your e-com, um, um, marketplaces and, and other channels. And when you build this one-off connection, who's maintaining it as APIs are updating and changing? Who's making sure that that middleware is secure and, and running properly 24-7? <coughs> you know, you've got all of these different needs wrapped in that, you know, there, there are layers of risk. Um, and then when you do need to update or change it, where's the guy that wrote it? <laughs> and, yeah. You know, you had this one developer who knew what he did or she did, probably didn't document it all that well because one-off work. Um, you know, that there are absolutely differences between having a, a SaaS product behind you, having a team that's responsible to you. Yeah, we're yeah. standing behind the product, you know, standing behind the support. So, and it's not just that, but for example, our platform is quite complex, right? So we have like order, like um, estimated time of arrival of the product. We have order tracking, we have returns. And you cannot really offer that experience, you know, if you're making one-off extensions. So let me just tell you a few things here. We do order tracking, right? We track the order from the moment, you know, it gets shipped out, you know, to the moment you, the customer receives it. So we basically track the time, how long it takes, you know, from point A to point B to receive that product, right? Mm-hmm. We track, we actually track, you know, the processing time of an order. Basically, the moment when the customer hits the buy button, you know, until you actually ship it out. So we track all kinds of data points, which we are actually using to do the estimates. Right. So if I would have just an order tracking extension, you know, and then I have another, you know, notification extension and I have another return extension and they are all siloed. Right. I would not be able, you know, to offer the same level of experience because I don't have the data point, you know, to calculate, you know, how long it takes, you know, an order from the moment you buy it, you know, until you receive it, you know, that estimated arrival time. So we do a lot of, you know, so everything is fully integrated, you know, and all the data points are flowing from one solution to another, you know, to basically provide that. So, you know, prior to making a purchase, we set the expectations by, you know, telling you when the product is going to arrive. You place the order in your order confirmation, you get like, okay, your order is going to arrive, you know, next week, Tuesday. Along the way, we update you, you know, like, where is your order? progress of it, notifications to SMS and email. We don't allow you to make a return prior for you to receive it, right? It's already interconnected. So when you receive it, you get another notification. You received it, now you can actually make a return. So it only activates the return, you know, when you actually receive it. Now, when you receive it, like when you calculate like return time, right? The return policy, it's like, let's say 30 days return policy. It's like 30 days from when? From the moment you actually purchased it or received it or from the moment when it got shipped out. So it's all these logics are working together. And because it knows when you actually shipped out the product, it knows how much time you have left to return. You want to return it, it looks up the stores around you, you know, like the store locator. So you can actually return that product to a store. You can return it, you know, through a package, you know, ship it back to the warehouse. So it's all actually working together. You put it back in the in the box, you ship it back. Basically, we track the order backwards. We tell you when the order is going to receive, you know, by the warehouse, how long it's going to take to be processed. So all that data analysis that's happening behind the scene, you know, is helping us, you know, to provide, you know, the solution that we're providing. And you cannot achieve that by doing, you know, one-off extensions that are in silo, you know, and like you. You have it. Yeah. You might offer the same feature, but you don't, you're not offering the same experience. So that's where, you know, like the SaaS model actually works. You know, like you're, it's a full baked out solution, multiple 
features working together, you know, supported, constantly updated, you know, constantly updated for UPS, USPS, uh, APIs. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. it's way different. Mm -hmm. And you know, Tristan, you're on the front lines with the product, <laughs> you know, yeah. so gauging uh, feedback from the Magento community. Have you found that any of the features in particular are, you know, a little bit more catchy for people's attention? Um, you know, have you run in, into you know anything surprising along the way? Yeah, I think number one, the main uh, feature is that really like appeals to almost everybody is the ETA on the product page. Like being able to have that same experience, like, hey, do you want it by December 9th? Orders in the, the next three hours, 52 minutes. Everybody knows what that means. Like that's, you know, taking a page um, essentially from Amazon, it's something that the customer knows is familiar and they're able to, you know, increase that conversion rate just by having that simple piece of information right next to the price, right next to customer reviews, everything else that you need as a customer to make that decision, right? Makes it super simple for them, sets up that expectation. So as far as like what is something that's like really eye-catching, I would say that's the number one thing that, that you know, I get a lot of good feedback on. Mm -hmm. um, as far as like what we're talking about when it comes to you know, segmentation, there are, I think, a lot of, especially developers. When I talk to developers, that's when we get pushed back on, well, you know, we're going down the, the three, the couple different packages that we have, and they're like, well, I'm not going to use this one. So, like, hmm. what are we going to do about the price there? Or, you know, I'm not, I don't like this one, but can we switch this over here? Like, can we do that? And, you know, I, tr I explain to them, you know, it's, it's a full package value, like, you know, and really um, go back to whatever they're trying to achieve. And say like you know you may not need this now, but as you grow, this could be something that you could use, right? Toggle yeah. on and off different um, uh, different features as needed as well. But yeah, uh, I'm not saving money on Google, you know, on G Suite Google Apps for Business because I'm not using Google Slides this month. Right, <laughs> that's just uh, that's the nature of the business. Yeah, and I think like we're kind of you know I think there and so that's when I talk to de mostly developers. When I talk to business owners, like they get it, they know that like. The one thing, the things that are dead, multi-year long contracts, like those are done. How can you even 36 months from now tell me what anything's going to look like? You know, like you, there is way too many unknowns. Things are moving way too quick for you to lock me into a three-year contract that, you know, I have to pay you one year up front, et cetera, et cetera. It's something that, you know, having a month-to-month a -month option, which is what, you know, we have, JetRails has. It's common sense. Everything, everything is moving away from those multi-year contracts. Yeah, and look, if you look at even other e-commerce platforms themselves, you know that a lot of them you're dealing with month-to-month -month billing. Um, you know, Magento, you're either open source and there's there's no billing, or, or you're in commerce where you're signing into these long contracts and interesting terms. It's it's interesting Spectrum. watching. You know, I, I'd be interested. You know, with the Adobe acquisition, if some of that eventually evolves, just because. Adobe has a lot of that that feel of um, you know more traditional subscriptions. Yeah, I don't think it's like, and it kind of comes from a place when you say like I got to lock you in for X amount of years. You're not putting a lot of like trust into your product. You know, you're not saying like, hey, this is fine. Like, take it or leave it. It's totally up to you because this is going to work for you. I know it does. It works for everybody else. It's in your same category. And like, if it doesn't, guess what? We're here to help you out. We're constantly improving the product. Like, we're on the front lines doing that kind of work for you. So it's totally fine. Like, I think when you, you know, even think about like really, really old companies like Spectrum, right? Like those, they're becoming, they're like, oh man, the worst companies, like horrible customer service, but they're starting to see like, this is what people demand. Nobody wants to be in a contract for multiple years. It really doesn't make sense. Like having that month to month um, and SaaS solution makes it one affordable. So you're not just like, you know, forking over your, entire budget all at once on something you don't, you know, you haven't been able to even really test and being able to get in and out of that, um, that situation if you want to, to you know, if it needs your business as, as you see fit. So absolutely. Yeah, think, sometimes it just feels good not to be shackled. You know, I have my cell phone service for a few years now from uh, Google Project Fi, now Google Fi. Uh, yeah. And I'm not shackled to anything. And I'm happy. <laughs> and, yeah, it's a very different feeling than I had 
you know, going in, in the opposite direction, you know, the same, yeah. uh, you know, forget the cable box, you're streaming everything, you're, you've got month to month, you know, agreements with, with all those streaming providers, whether you're, you know, Netflix mm-hmm. or, uh, you know, pick your poison, right? No shortage of them, but. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, so, yeah, I think that's, you know, as far as like the, the shininess factor, I think the ETA is the number one thing that people are just like, wow, that I need that, you know, that's something that they don't know how to achieve on their own. You'd have to have a lot of logistics. Mm-hmm like Amazon. And then on the back end, yeah, this is the number one thing is kind of like peri- cherry picking every now and then, but mm-hmm. for the most part. Pretty do you do you run into any objections um, with any frequency? Maybe people that, you know, they're just not used to adding on SaaS with Magento as much. They're more uh, comfortable and historically, you know, familiar with uh, one-off extensions, the pricing on one-off extensions, that sort of thing. Um, do you find that sometimes you have to educate the consumer or do you think that they're by and large, they're past that already, that this has already been um, in front of them with other solutions and other providers? I think the first thing is that the main thing I hear is that like, you know, we get to pricing and it's just like, all right, that makes sense. I really don't have like a whole bunch of objections from the get go. It's just a matter of when you start drilling down like the individual one off um, features then you start to kind of like toggle here and there, but like our pricing is super affordable. Um, especially if you start to look at like, you know, the very few competitors that we do have, um, we're far and above, you know, that experience. And I think that our pricing is extremely affordable at this point. Um, and so that's, that's one thing, but, um, as far as like, you know, looking at, um, just like objections in general, um, I think it's more of thinking through like, oh, well, I really haven't like their main objection is more of a clarification on their end. Like, I haven't really thought about like how this my RMA process would be self-service. Like, how is this going to work with my system? Like, that's mm-hmm. more of the objections that I get. Like, how is this actually going to work with my business now that I have this this knowledge? And then, you know, we kind of revisit that on maybe like the second or third phone call. But we start to kind of really work with that customer to see what uh, we can accomplish for them. But I think a lot of the value is just like right there in your face. Like we have a tracker tracking orders page. You punch in your, you know, USPS or UPS tracking number. It keeps you in the site and lets you know exactly all the order history or the tracking history associated with that order. Right. Like that's valuable. You're not sending them out to USPS. They're not getting, you know, sent to UPS. And then UPS is saying, Oh, I already delivered it. And they're like, I don't have my package. Oh, well you delivered it to USPS, the local post office. And now it's like the last mile it's on a truck. It'll be your house, you know, later on today. So I think a lot of the value is like just staring you right there in the face. Um, and it's, it's, you know, pretty, yeah, I would just add to this that, you know, selling extensions, you know, versus selling SaaS is a little bit different. Um, you know, people understand the value, but uh, selling SaaS usually has like a longer time, you know versus extension with extension you don't really need any kind of approval you know from like upper management nothing you know you just get the card out you have a hundred dollars on it you know you buy an extension and that's it or 200 or whatever is the price where with um sas is a little bit more complicated they want to think it through you know this is a commitment even if at the end of the year you know they end up spending the exact same amount or less it's just you know the buying is a little bit harder mm-hmm. and from the but that depends mostly to who you're talking to if you're talking with the developer you know he's like oh you know i have to sell this to my boss you know if you're mm-hmm. talking you know, with somebody from upper management they're like oh yeah no problem i totally get it it's fine um another you know part with the SaaS model versus extension is you know with extension they have access to the code right with SaaS, they do not have and everybody always wants to modify something right it's like Oh, I need to modify something. Well, think about it, you know, like that's how I look at it. You know, you have the Apple, you know, and you have like the the Android, right? Apple didn't allow you to modify anything for the longest time, you know, where Android allowed you to do whatever, right? And um, kind of the same, a very similar situation is here as well, you know, but you don't really need to modify that much, you know, because this is a solution that if it works for like 99% of the people, you know, most likely it's going to work for you as well. And sometimes all those modifications that you want to do, you know, are either going to decrease, you know, like the conversion, you know, of the test that you have to achieve, you know, the experience is not going to be as great, 
or, you know, you're just messing up everything. Or, you know, it might work out perfectly for your very unique business. But people always think that their business is so unique. Most of the businesses are not that unique. You know, whatever works for one company, most likely is going to work for the other one. They just have to be a, be a bit more flexible, I think. Yeah. Well, Indeed, I, you know, there's like customization that needs to be done, but not to the extent that most of the companies need, you know, like I want that button, you know, upside down. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the, and it's partly because there's a big cost to not having a, you know, a certain amount of flexibility in your specifications. Um, it's the same way that there's, we were talking about earlier that, you know, hidden opportunity cost of, you know, you're spending money on customer service that you don't need to be because your software is not doing what it should be doing or you know, and in hosting, we run into things like, you know, your site's too slow, <laughs> and, yeah. uh, you know, or it, it's got intermittent issues or it's not as scalable as it should be. And so it slows down or starts uh, or, or you know, stops working properly when you hit your peak traffic. Um, all these things that you don't think about as much, but once they're a problem, they're cutting into your bottom line and they can have long term impacts on your business. So um, mm -hmm. it, it all sorts sort of comes together that sometimes uh, everyone needs to sit in the room with an open mind and just think about the bottom line and you know the long the long game really you know as opposed to the one move on the chessboard you know it's it's about <laughs> you know, absolutely you know thinking a few moves ahead um yeah there's... which reminds me uh, on a recent episode um of the podcast we talked a little bit about um the uh sort of very quickly announced um, end of life of Magento shipping. And that, that was, you know, a third party provider that was acquired that was eventually, you know, announced that they were spinning down because it wasn't profitable at all. It was a major loss. Uh, have you by any chance run into merchants um, coming around looking for other shipping solutions? I know that you, you know, ha have more of a focus on the customer facing side, but um have you run into any of those merchants that are now uh, shopping around for other solutions? Yeah, they, <laughs> it happens. <laughs> I cannot say no. You know, like people are mistaken us, you know, for other companies thinking that we are doing very similar things to other companies. Um, you know, most often, you know, we're confused with like, how are you guys different, you know, from Shipper HQ? You know, it's like probably everybody thinks we're big competitors, but we're definitely not. You know, we're competing each other. So then we just explain them like, hey, we're not actually doing this, you know, like just go to, you know, these guys or those guys, you know, and like they do exactly what you need. You know, we're basically taking where they end, you know, we take that experience further. So we're completing, you know, like the ship works, you know, like the shipper HQs, you know, of the world. So yeah, and they do, but we redirect them correctly. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, speaking of features people are asking you for, anything new on the horizon that, uh, that you're able to talk about? A any, you know, it's SaaS. So really, uh, as you deploy new things, those become available uh, to your user base, I imagine. So, um, sure. uh, and I know you can't always talk about, <laughs> uh, about roadmap, but any, um, any spoilers you can share? Yeah, so we're actually very transparent. You know, we put up all the features on the website and it says coming soon. And when we're going to get to it, you know, we're going to be there. Um, hopefully very soon. Um, currently, we're working on uh, analytics. So even with Magento, one of Wildpixel is very, you know, known for our Google Tag Manager, Google Analytics implementation. Um, I worked in analytics for a while. You know, I love analytics. You know, there's so much value in having data. And with we supply, we have access to so much data, right? And we're going to build out almost like a BI, but it's not going to be a BI, <laughs> you know? So you're going to have like standard reporting, you know, around data points that currently you do not have access to, you know, like we already have data points such as like, what's your processing time by location, you know, like warehouse one versus warehouse two. Like if you ask any business owner, they have no idea how warehouse one is performing to warehouse two. So we have those kind of data and, you know, we're expanding it even further with like um, better understanding of why your products get returned, you know, skew level return data, you know, like why people, for example, you might have a 
a jacket, you know, and people don't like it because, you know, you, your zipper is not, you know, the best. You now have access to all that data, you know, to analyze, to improve, you know, how your products are made, how your processing time is for delivery, processing time for returns, like crazy amount of data that currently you do not have access. That's one. Um, and yeah, one of my favorite feature is going to be, um, we're really close to that, to this, uh, hopefully very early next year, we're going to be able to start working on it and deliver it very shortly after, um, is, um, chat and, uh, basically Alexa. So it's great, you know, to reach out through phone, you know, and, and email, you know, to customer service. You know, there are two ways They are kind of old, you know, um, who has time, you know, to stay on the phone, you know, waiting for half an hour, nobody. Um, emails might take forever, you know, to respond, you know, or you don't really have a conversation. So we're looking to integrate our solution with SMS, with Facebook, uh, with WhatsApp, you know, so basically we can service the customer, you know, on their own time. And I don't mean it, you know, to have like a customer service text, you know, but more like a chatbot, right? So if you think around it, about it, you know, like more than 60% of the questions are, where's my order? How do I make a return? When do I get my money back, right? We answer all those questions already. So, you know, when customer says, you know, hey, my order number is whatever, you know, uh, and I'm wondering when it's going to arrive, we have that info so we can proactively, you know, like notify the customer. We have a chatbot, you know, that can say, you know, like when it's going to arrive. We have all that data. So we, that's like one of the core things. And with, <laughs> oh, this is going to be so cool. I'm so excited for this. It's, um, the integration with uh, Alexa and Google Home, you know, uh, we all have it around us. You know, if you have like, um, you know, you drive, you have access to basically these things these days. So you can just simply ask like, hey, Alexa, where is my order, right? And it's going to be able to respond to you. And, you know, it's going to be really cool because knowing what you ordered, you know, you can just say like, hey, can or Alexa, can you reorder my toothpaste, you know? And yeah, sure, you know, we know exactly what's your delivery address. We have every data point, you know, we integrate back to your um, e-commerce store, you know, and replace that order. So it's really cool. And we can say like, yeah, sure, it's going to arrive, you know, next week. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's definitely the future, you know? So um, we we have the data points, you know, we have the intelligence, we have the system, you know, it's just, we have to build out that. So it's going to take a little bit of time, but yeah, that's our future. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure chatting with both of you. Um, now, I've certainly uh, any final thoughts that you'd like to add? Um, I'll start with Trista. Um, yeah, so definitely um, ways to get in contact with us. Obviously, go to WeSupplyLabs.com. Um, you can find me on LinkedIn. I'd love to connect with you. Uh, it's just Tristan Oker, O-K-E-R. Um, or, you know, check out WeSupply, that page as well. Um, we are going to be having uh, uh, webinars here in the future as well um, that are going to be coming up. And if you'd love to take part in those, um, whether you're, you know, an agency, um, developer or, you know, tech partner, feel free to reach out. Uh, we'd love to hear your thoughts and, you know, share our audience with you as well. And, and that's about it. Yeah. Feel free to, to give us a shout anytime. Uh, we'll send over some uh, contact info as well to Robert. And yeah, thanks for having us. This has been great. Awesome. And Virgil? Well, all I could say is like, uh, <laughs> You know, I think we covered a lot, you know, uh, I would just say this, you know, we still have like a freemium version for um, a very short amount of time. We're moving away from that very shortly. So, you know, you can sign up, you can use the software, you know, completely free. Um, and yeah, and, you know, whatever feedback you guys have, you know, we're most likely, you know, we'd love to get that feedback, you know, to further improve our solution. So. And, you know, you guys can find us. <laughs> We're <laughs> continuously going to, you know, develop, you know, for Magento, moving uh, we supply further, you know, probably integrating it with other systems as well. Shopify probably, you know, very shortly. And, yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you again to both of you for joining and, and sharing information about your experiences. Uh, this, uh, you know, has been an episode of the Jet Rails podcast, which you 
out there uh, listening can subscribe to wherever uh, you listen to podcasts, uh, or you can subscribe uh, as we post videos to YouTube. Um, we post every episode uh, up on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook at JetRails. Um, so feel free to uh, follow us and keep an eye. And we love to hear from our listeners. So if you have any special requests or thoughts or feedback, by all means, feel free to reach out to us. Um, you can just go to jetrails.com and get in touch. And uh, you know, thank you and happy selling.